Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for Monday, October 21st. Basically running into the end of the year. My name is Kevin Hurley. Glad to be with you tonight. I look forward to going over some live examples and some things that are on my mind that I've read and that I'm looking forward to for the end of the year. As I go through this, I want you to take a look at our market cap, market recap that I'm pulling from Y charts right now. It's a pretty interesting look at where where our market's going and where how do I say where we can see. Boy, I can't say what I want to say. It's my way to review and to get a confirmation of what I see in the market and where things are going. A lot of people could have said, hey, you know, it's it's Boeing, it's this, it's that, it's China. I mean, I don't know. I'm always looking for some confirmation on where I think things are going and why I, I'm looking at what I'm looking at. It's an interesting idea of really nothing more than confirming that I'm not too far off base. Obviously, Boeing was a big part of last week. It dropped significantly. Industrial sh uh, shares fell. Tech shares fell. Uh, Walt Disney fell even though Netflix had great earnings and, and you know, even though it dropped 6.2%, it had good earnings and was up after earnings. It, it's just my way of going through and seeing that I, I understood where our markets went. But in plain and simple, in all English, if you took a peek, it was earnings. It was an earnings play. Dow Industrial, Industrial Average fell 1%. Last week, S&P fell 0.4, and the NASDAQ um, finished 0.4 up. And actually, fell 0.4 to close out the Friday period up more than 5%. I'm sorry. Let me try this again. Uh, Dow Jones finished up 0.2 for the week. NASDAQ finished up 0.5 for the week, a half a percent. And the NASDAQ finished up 0.4, even with our horrific Friday. So here are my thoughts. Earnings moved us higher over bad news. What do you think? Is, could you agree to that? Is that something you would agree to? Or expectations made sense there? <laughs> yes and yes and yes. Okay. So... I also, my thought is 25% of the S&P 500 earnings are happening this week. So, out of curiosity, where do you think we're going to go this week? If earnings moved us last week, and earnings will most likely move us this week. Okay, two of you just typed in higher, and one of you typed in bullish. <laughs> and one said to Disney World. <laughs> um, so my question is, obviously you think higher, so I can go so higher, but why? Not sure enough to break out, Mod, I'm with you on that. Mine is sure thing here. So where? Why are we going to go higher? You've got 25% of the S&P are reporting, but because a large number is reporting does not mean that it's going higher. 
Nice to see Zion's Bank Corp up higher, almost 2% after hours. But mine is a sure thing. So ADP has the sure thing. His crystal ball obviously works better than I do. I need numbers, though. I can't trade people's money on a crystal ball. I can't trade people's money on, and I went funny, I went through this twice today, on my gut tells me, I feel, I think. No one pays me to think, to feel, to outguess the market. If you're paying anyone for that, then we seriously need to talk about what you're thinking of. All that money should come back to me. Hey, Kevin, I want it more traditionally traded. Piece of cake. We can do the S&P, the NASDAQ, the FTSE, the Dow, um, trade up into a big cap 60-40, but instead of going to bonds, I'll do a bond fund of some type or a dividend fund. I'll add protection only as crossovers come. You'll never beat the market. You'll only match the market, although my protection could help you beat it. But... Why? Why? And I've got a couple question marks in here. Why are we going higher this week? And I'm not letting you feel it. I'm not letting you think it. Your gut can't tell you. ADP, your crystal ball doesn't work. Lance, just because you said so? Ha! <laughs> I'm not buying it. Give me a reason. And Jeff is here. Jeff Schaffner, you're not allowed to answer because I may have told you. Up uh, because people like to touch the ceiling or heaven if available. Oh, my gosh. Now you've gone all religious on me. <laughs> so let me give you an answer that I could give to someone. Because the bar has been set at earnings coming in minus 5% for this quarter. The bar has been set so low that on the high-low side, earnings should be down 5% this quarter. There is my reason for believing we'll probably go higher. And really, it comes down to the fact that earnings or expectations have been set too low. financials and that's uh, the banks only right the banks are coming off their best quarter I want to say historically but let's put it seasonally that's probably a better way to say it seasonally because people have bought homes And lenders, let's take that back, creditors are starting their best quarter for pre-Christmas purchasing. So, I'm going to say... The 22% where financials used to be the real estate, bank lending, and other lending, 22% has had its best quarter to beat and or will beat with the guidance for this next quarter.
expectations are been set too low financials and then then we have other seasonal trends for a Christmas guidance. I don't call it a Christmas rally, but some tech, retail, um, I'm going to say durable goods. And what I'm really trying to say there are small materials. The material sector as a whole, you're not going to see building and all that going on. But small goods are, are used during this time for the creation of all the toys and crap that we buy at Christmas. Um, I was shocked to see how well Alcoa did. If you take a peek at Alcoa, Alcoa had their earnings, and I was shocked at how well Alcoa did. And it really shocks me to see the earnings and to see it move up literally from, geez, down here, from... 1925 and to trade as high as 2154 at the close two days later. Ten percent Alcoa. Shocking. So those are my reasons for what I see coming up. I used a little bit of this earlier, and I'm going to use it again today. If you had 300 shares of AEP, you could have possibly a 600 run into the end of the year. If you had Boeing, and had possibly 400 shares. You're looking at a $14,000 run up to your next resistance level at 375. If you had 1,000 shares of Bank of America and some long call contracts, Just up to 32 when it finished at, where did it close? Market close. When it finished at 3102, a run up to 32 gives you that much. Baidu, six contracts. 135 June 2020, I believe is where we're at. With the run up to 115, past resistance. Could create some amazing money for you. Disney, 1,000 shares, running back to one. I'm probably going to say 150, and that's including your long call protection. Ford, 2,200 shares. With the run just back up to $10, I really want to tell you to go to 1050 or 11. IBB is a covered call strategy. JP Morgan, I'm only using on JP Morgan 500 shares. Some long puts that are still in place on a on a bull call, but JP Morgan, probably only 125 is realistic. Currently trading at 123.55 is where it closed. This is just 500 shares. 
long put, which is now a bull put, run to 125. Eli Lilly, I'm not going to really go over. Target, I've done a cover call. I'm not going to go over. Under Armour, how am I coming this up with this? 1,300 shares with $20 long puts in place for earnings. Running back to 27.50. Visa, 500 shares running to 191. Previous highs. There's a lot of opportunity out there, especially for shares that have had protection throughout this year and picked up share counts or lowered their cost basis running through, which is very interesting because I was going to show you guys a real crappy job of a seeking article. Uh, seeking Alpha article, and I clicked on it, and it was so funny because uh, I can't do it. Let's see if I can do it right now. Hold on. Because as I watched it and read, I just thought, "Oh, horrible! What an awful job!" As I went to the Seeking Alpha, ah, the article has been removed from the site. So if you follow David Pinson, boy, did he really screw up. And if you look at Locking in Apple Gains, let me tell you what he was suggesting. Buy to open, October 25, 2019. $190 long puts for, God, I think it was nine cents, right? 18, yep. For nine cents or for 200 shares trading at roughly 234.59. It only costs 18 bucks. And I really chuckled. I really thought, you got to be kidding. Who is this idiot that would suggest you're protecting stock and rights for seeking alpha? and suggest to you, hey, people that apparently are dumber than dirt in his mind, right? You can really protect yourself if you go out to a 190 protective put, which is funny because right now you can get the same position for Zero to no pennies, right? Let me show you where I'm looking at just so you can follow along. So that nine cents right now is basically worth nothing. Mark is zero. So you just paid 18 bucks for nothing. But more importantly, Ooh, so the delta's changed. Right now, the delta is a one one hundredth. It was one penny last time, right? And the dummy th said, ah, Apple can fall to 200. So basically, it's falling $35, which means maybe 
after it falls, 90, 200, 210, 225. You might make up to 37 no 3.7 cents on the dollar add a couple more let's say you make six cents on the dollar and my thought process is what dumbass thinks they're protecting or locking in apple gains at 190 234.59 minus 190 equals $44.59 of risk in Apple. Out of curiosity, if you're using the October 25th long puts, are you protecting yourself through earnings? Someone even wrote in here, and I love this. I stuck it in here so we can read it. Except the earnings are the week after your expiration. So doing the expiration of 25th is pretty much useless it doesn't protect the damn thing. I love he says, do your homework instead of writing a useless article. Yeah. And you think he apologized or adjusted it? Nope. So let me get this straight. You're going to spend $18 to still risk 44.59. Divided by 234.59. Risk in Apple is only 18.30% of total invested capital. And this dummy is educating to thousands of people. This is how you protect Apple. Can someone please type in and tell me what is his education called? Can you guys see that? If not, you know what? Let me just make it easier. It's kind of dumb that I've got this so little. Bulletproof investing, concentrated hedged investing for competitive returns with minimal risk. Oh, the article got removed from the site. You know what I might call it? Someone tell me, Lance, you know me long enough, or Dave, actually, it's like Dave is here. David is not here. Dave, what would I call it? Keith, you can weigh in too if you want to. <laughs> One guess what I would call it. Is Bill Brandner here tonight? Bill would also know exactly what I'd call it. There we go. I couldn't have said it better myself. Dumbass investing. I cannot warn you enough on how risky it is to be investing in stock pickers and advisories and education in general. 
And no, I'm not saying they're all bad. Yes, if you, if I had my pick, uh, safe option strategies would be my best. And I'm linked to them. I've known Jeffrey for 20 years. I get it. But you've got to watch out. You've got to understand that if really, if they were, if they were in any way, shape, or form good at any of this, they'd be licensed, bonded, and insured to do it in real life. They would be bought up if they had any kind of returns that were a tenth of what these dummies say they are. You don't think Morgan Stanley would have bought them up for billions of dollars to make trillions of dollars? I like seeking alpha. But that doesn't mean that every time I get a stupid article, I check the numbers to find out if they're full of crap or not. Everything that I go through and that I send you, like my one right here on four reasons to like Ford, I don't put it on here if I can't verify the number of units and the percent increase. Now, I didn't check the YouTube video of you so far, but I make sure that the numbers are legitimate, that I can at least find it somewhere from a reliable source. I was going to tell you, I have no idea why they think the Ford Escape should have stronger sales in 2020. If anything, these numbers are going down. But they wrote it in here, and I can tell you that. Their F-series are off a little bit. But it's off to the downside. They should do higher. Their consumer confidence is correct. And their numbers that they have through here, I can find or I can justify. I can see where they're going. I can do a non-gap PE. I can do a forward earnings gap. I can do a three and a five year. I can run their price to sales. I can do their EBITDA. I can see their price to cash flow. If it's close, I'm on board. But I don't start peddling this crap that's out there when down the road it's going to say, oh, let me tell you how to do it. At Hurley Investments, we are willing to pay at the money, long put protection because why? Someone please tell me why we're willing to do at the money, long put protection. especially on Apple. I could also tell you, or slightly out of the money. Will someone please tell me because why? <laughs> Love it, Lance. Because it is the best bang for the buck. Another way to say that, Lance, though, it protects the most amount of your capital 
prior to earnings still giving you upside potential. What does that mean? We don't underpay or overpay for protection. Does that mean there are times when we might roll long puts for losses? Like we have on Apple protecting at 208 up to 240. Yes. In fact, we might lose $11 protecting 32 more dollars. Kevin, why would you lose $11 to protect 32 more dollars on Apple? Well, because it is at an all-time high. Because it has had a 20% gain. Because Japan said they had a 20%, excuse me, 10% increase in, I want, I want to say orders, but uh, in parts orders doesn't mean they will beat all areas of their earnings. Because we like protecting profits. Because we are not stupid and don't gamble the profits of stock positions away. Because we believe there will come another stock market crash that must be worse than 2008. And I can keep going. Uh, we're starting to... Uh, record a bunch of small videos, Keeve and I. I hope you go uh, take a peek, uh, maybe maybe go to YouTube and Google Hurley Investments. And one of our more recent ones is going to be real S&P 500 earnings. We've got a bunch out there, but if your friends wonder what type of investing you do, we're trying to give you guys a ton of ammunition, a ton of short videos that do a better job explaining how important we feel it is to protect your portfolios. I really need to do one on the story of a dollar. How dumb is it? to sit and wait and let your portfolio lose half its value and try to guess when it's going to come in again, knowing that a 50% loss takes a 100% return to get it back. How dumb is it for people to give their money to a mutual fund that mathematically, and this is going to go for 401ks and really goes for annuities, that mathematically is more expensive than the average gain on the S&P 500. 
mathematically, people have been doing 401ks since uh, the late 70s. And when you take out the money they've put in, there's zero to negative growth. Well, Kevin, are you beating the S&P 500 this year? Not yet. I might be at the end of the year. But you know what I am doing? I'm protecting people's portfolios through Brexits. I hopefully am giving people a longer life from not worrying when the market's down 3% a day and they see their portfolios down 5%. I'm being honest with real charges for people and what they're being charged. I'm being honest and giving them real protection than a hedged asset class BS protection. I don't write dumb articles for bulletproof investing that have to get yanked off of off of, I'm, I'm so ticked off and frustrated, uh, yanked off of Seeking Alpha. I give you guys three times a week to talk to us. I answer my damn phone when someone calls. I despise money managers and advisors that are all the big box guys because I know how little they do and it bugs me that people get sucked into a false sense of security that I've seen ruin people's retirements that I've seen ruin people's lives I'm okay if people don't like me I don't care if some people like me, but I am going to do the best of my ability to manage their money and to weather the panics and the these up and down cycles that we go through. If you ask me where we're going to end this week, I'm going to tell you up. And we might have big 1% down days, but overall up because of who's going to report and why. I pulled out our charts. I still would have thought they were bearish, but in all honesty, we're now technically bullish. On the Dow. We look on the S&P, we're now technically bullish. I almost typed something else in there. We're technically bull, yes. <laughs> Freudian slip, right? <laughs> and on the NASDAQ in a week, we're now technically bullish. Which again gives me confidence to the seasonality that we're going to run into for a Christmas season. If we take a look, uh, I still am going with my 1.25. We actually might finish October, the worst month, higher than a 1.25 gain. Earnings, uh, Halliburton, Taco, Del Taco, Pets, Pet Smart and Zions Bank. Uh, Tuesday, we have quite a bit, but Tuesday, um, Tuesday, where is it in my book? Yep, Tuesday we have quite a bit, and I just pay attention to it. It's Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday has Boeing, FCX, Ford, Morgan Stanley, Lilly. Some pretty important earnings for me on, on Wednesday. Thursday has Visa. Friday I'm going to pay attention to Verizon, but these are the earnings that are coming up. And being 25%, there are a lot more that I don't have in here. And there's some major ones like Amazon that's a bellwether. Um, 
caterpillar on Wednesday, which can be considered a bellwether. I don't know why, but it is. Um, we have Valero on Thursday, 3M on, on Thursday. So there's a lot in here that I'm not necessarily putting in because it won't matter so much to me. Economics reports, pretty subdued. Existing home sales, really Thursday's the big day. Durable goods and new homes. And the expectation on durable goods is that we're gonna be down negative uh, 1.0. And if you take out transportation, it'll be down a negative 0.3. I would really like to see durables be positive. That will run into my scenario that we're going to have a better than expected end of the year. But the last uh, month it was negative after two months of being positive. I'm looking for revisions and looking for durable goods that people are starting to buy again. Uh, new home sales is doing really good. 7.03 million, I believe, is what we're looking for there. Really big numbers on Thursday. Let's see, uh, I still have our earnings reports in here. I tried to pull out stuff that was no longer viable, but I did keep uh, some good stuff in there so you can go through some of your own positions and see where they're going to have earnings. Um, I have a little WeWork, could run out cash by mid-November for anyone that was thinking about WeWork. I've heard that bounced around. Uh, I agree with this article. The numbers work out. They could definitely be running out of money even with the most recent job cuts. Pretty funny to see him be the premier office space person going bankrupt. Premier, they can't manage their money. I have a little article on the Facebook. Uh, I agree with it. I like the price target. I do think there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, I put some information about uh, Bank of America and advisor fees. Just something for you guys to pay attention to. Kind of funny too, because their advisor fees to 2.41. Interesting. Those would be their true advisor fees. Investment banking jumped 40%. A lot of people are jumping in for the Christmas rally. Four reasons to like Ford. Please read through it. Yes, I'm picking on Ken Fisher, and in all honesty, I found even a better one. If I could find even the better one here, Ken Fisher, this is great. Hardball culture reels in the billions. All kinds of money that oversees 100 billion is getting pulled away from them. All this, hey, nice, buddy, buddy. Amazing to, to see all that's getting pulled out of them. Um, shocking. Shocking, shocking, shocking. But I do think it was well-deserved. I'll put this one in here too, but yes, I'll admit I'm just sticking something in here to pick on one of my competitors because I think he deserves it. <laughs> Probably not appropriate to keep talking about it. Uh, the trade war, the market just wants to see good earnings. Uh, I do agree with this one as well, and I, I have to agree with it. But more so, I like the fact that we're in a lot of earnings that just haven't come to pass. A bunch of earnings that that we have great stocks that can go higher. And then I just found an interesting article on a chart that ranks everyone by their wealth and a snapshot of the inequality. It really comes down to this chart. If you wanted to see where you're at and how big the inequality is, uh, take a peek at uh, at this one, and you'll see where you would rank and. I found it interesting is all I'm going to say. I found it interesting, so I put it in here. Kind of nice not being uh, being roughly in, you know, number five. 
slightly above number five, but that's where I'm at. So uh, questions. I'm sorry, I, I can't believe I talked so much today. Questions for you guys. What questions can I answer that uh, will help you out? So that way I'm not just ripping on my competition. While you're typing in a question or two, um, I do think it's important for people to understand, to truly understand what their money is doing. So again, we're starting to do a bunch of these smaller videos. Uh, instead of you guys ever having to try to describe how your money is being managed or how you're trying to manage some of your money yourself, please go take a peek and just uh, go to YouTube and search, you know, Hurley Investments intro. That's a good one. Uh, Hurley Investments and, well, if you find the intro video, you should see a bunch of the other ones. We're trying to get out there so you guys can forward them off to some people and help them before we run into our next big market crash. Interesting question. Lance, Kevin, are you adding a full collar trade on right now? I am not. Uh, with I wouldn't put a I wouldn't cap some of my upside positions like Visa. I wouldn't cap. Uh, Disney, I wouldn't cap Facebook, Ford, Apple, I might cap, but things that I don't cap, um, I can always add short calls after their earnings. True, I'll lose a little bit of volatility crush, but, but I do think it's smart for companies to go through earnings and running into a, a seasonally bullish run I'm not looking at capping anything. We still have bullish markets. So I don't want to see something get a big rebound and not gain that upside opportunity because I've got it capped with a short call and have to roll it six months out in time for maybe a break even and lose that upside opportunity or potential. Uh, interesting question, Lance, because I was asked that same question or got to talk about that same question uh, early in the day with a, an individual as well. So short answer, no, there's not a whole lap, a whole lot that I think would be important to cap at this time. Kevin, please expand on the Brexit. Um, so right now, Brexit has come with a deal that'll keep most of their trading partners with the European Union in place. Um, they just have to vote on it in Europe. And it looked like they maybe were not going to have the, the uh, votes for it. But in a preliminary vote, they were pretty close. So they pushed it off for a short period of time, basically to make sure they have the votes. A not, a not a lot has come out on the deal. But it's pretty interesting to see um, a company say, we want to get away from the European Union. We don't want to deal with, with not being able to monetize our debt. Yet, that there's no, no, we want to keep all the perks. So your, Britain is a good example of, of how would I say it? Um, of, of wanting their, their cake and to eat it at the same time or eat it too. Um, you asked a question on, on a deadline and most recently, the most recent deadline that's been extended is out to October 31st. And the short answer is that they're going to come up to a way that <laughs> that uh, they're trying to find all the votes or enough of the votes for a majority to exit Brexit, to still have some dealings in place as they shift back over to the pound. Uh, ADP, love it. We are lazy is my next IPO. A little something came out on Facebook on that one that uh, was absolutely hilarious. Um, I, I believe it was picking on the Democratic Party, 
but very interesting, and I think it'll be yes. Let's do every. Let's get everything for nothing. Yeah, because that always works, right? Any other questions I can answer for you guys? If not, I've kind of gone a little bit longer than usual. Uh, I've gone out to uh, almost a full hour. You can go to My Hurley Investment to see some of my short videos that are trying to help people out. Impact on market way, pass or does not pass. So the short answer is Europe is hurting in general right now. And in all honesty, there's not too much that the Brexit would do for GDP one way or the other. It should be a non-market mover, but there is fear there. So in all honesty, towards the 31st of, of December, of excuse me, October, if with this extension they can't pass it, you could see Brexit start to ruin our Christmas rally, where you do have probably a pullback, Somewhere in that five to ten percent that things can slide down. That's what happened in uh, in May on us. So in all honesty, you could see almost a ten percent drop, which would most likely ruin our Christmas rally for the year. The neat thing is some of the stocks that we trade in, like a Ford, a Disney, Visa, you might you might not see much of an impact. But in all honesty. It really doesn't affect the European Union GDP at all. It does affect Britain's GDP, but they're not a big player right now. Trump's going to get some type of deal in place, trade deal with them. And in all honesty, it's probably going to benefit the U.S. because of the ridiculous tariffs that they have primarily on automobiles and on manufacturing goods but we might be a cheaper person for Britain than the European Union, even with the transportation costs and shipping. So perceived risk, a pullback, five to 7%, maybe 10%. Real risk, next to nothing. Doesn't affect the European GDP a whole lot. Um, it will affect Britain's, but it's not a mover you'll see worry losses occurred in our stock market. Uh, great questions, Jeff, on the Brexit, by the way. That's uh, that's uh, tipping my hats off to Mr. Schaffner, Jeff Schaffner, on asking some great questions on the Brexit. And it's funny, we are becoming a more globalized market where more things globally are affecting us. Um. Look at us go back into next year, 2020, and watch the pigs and debt having to be restructured in Europe come to pass. And I, you know, that'll probably be the start of uh, really what I would call a global recession, a 2.5% growth rate or lower, as the IMF talks about. It'll be when they've got to restructure all that debt again in 2000 and the pigs come back into play and it just starts uh, a recession that the US will most likely go into unless we get China taken care of. But it will most likely start with Europe, but it will not be Brexit. It'll be the restructuring of the trillions of dollars in debt from the pigs. And a lot of this comes to pass again in 2000, the short five-year term period. All right, guys. Hey, have a wonderful evening. I'll work on getting this posted this evening. Uh, out here in Texas, helping out parents right now, which means most likely I'll be traveling Wednesday and Thursday to get back home, maybe Thursday and Friday to get back home. Key will be watching over everything. We'll be in constant contact together. Um, just to give Key some credit, by the way, Key and I spend a lot of time uh, basically every morning, at least an hour going through what we saw, what we read, what we're studying, something I may have missed, he points out to me.
we do spend a lot of time, and I'm always pretty certain Jeff here in the near future is getting some things together. Well, he also will be spending some more time with us. Uh, pretty nice to have a Jeffrey T. Smith on board. So you guys take care. Have a wonderful evening, and I will uh, talk to you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.